Britain's railway network is one of the most extensive in the world, and it's the oldest too. As a result, there are many secrets and little facts that have been lost to history, and I think let's try and uncover some today, on an important artery, the Birmingham to Hereford mainline. It's often overlooked, but it's just as important as some lines in London. Oh, which is where all these other sort of videos have been located. I would like to make this a more nationwide thing. I think that's enough of a prelude. Shall we begin? Right, enough blubbering. Let's get started. The Birmingham to Hereford main line originates in Britain's second city, starting at Birmingham New Street, calling at Five Ways, University, Selly Oak, Bourneville, Kings Norton, Northfield, Longbridge, Bank Green, Bromsgrove, Troutwich Spa, Worcester Fourgate Street, Malvern Link, Great Malvern, Colwall, Ledbury, and finally Hereford. We start in Birmingham New Street, the busiest station on the line, and the eighth busiest station in the United Kingdom as of 2021. Whilst it was originally constructed in 1854, it's been rebuilt twice over the years. It originally looked like this, then this, and now this. Despite being a nightmare to navigate around, thanks to many different lounges and platform letters and stuff, it's still quite a pleasant station and has a massive variety of shops and eateries, thanks to the Grand Central Shopping Centre located right inside it. After a few hours in the labyrinth, let's board our train. The line continues through some tunnels, and our first station is Five Ways. It's a small two-platform station, and is only served by local stopping trains. It's literally in a trench. Besides the trench bit, there's nothing particularly unusual about it, other than the way it's pronounced. Apparently, locals call it Five Ways, with no particular emphasis on any syllable. I find this hard to believe, as it does not roll off the tongue very well at all, but it is Birmingham. We now continue to the next station, University. As it's named, this is a station for Birmingham University. Other than a footbridge over the platform, it's relatively generic, which is why it's being rebuilt. I don't know what I think of the rebuilt, as it doesn't exist yet. The next station is Selly Oak, and unfortunately I wasn't able to visit there today. However, from what I can tell, it's the most boring station on the line. But, uh... A Google search says there were 365 instances of violent and sexual assault in 2017, so, uh, hmm. Right, on to Bourneville. The whole station is painted in purple. This is a reference to the Cadbury factory just next to it. Also, the entire village is a sort of model village. It's designed in a mock Tudor style, and was built to accommodate the workers of said Cadbury factory in the late 1800s. Also, alcohol is banned in the village. This is because the Cabri family were Quakers, and they do not believe in alcohol. Well, they do believe it exists, just not in drinking it. And now for Kings Norton. This is an unusual station, as whilst it does have fast platforms, they've been out of use for many years, and have thus in a state of a bit of disrepair. The footbridge still goes down to them though. As our train continues its journey, note how the overhead wires do not cover the fast lines. This is extremely irritating, as it discourages potential electrification of the trains that operate on them. Northfield. I couldn't find anything particularly interesting around the station. If there is anything you find notable, let me know. And now for Longbridge. Whilst the station is relatively average, the town was once host to an MG car factory. However, when this closed in 2017, it started to go into a bit of a decline. Fortunately, some redevelopment projects have started to take place, however their success will have to be evaluated in the future. Our next station is Bank Green, located in the leafy suburb of the same name. The most interesting thing about this station is the fact that the platforms br that branch off to Redditch are like 90 degrees or something. They're insanely curved. As we pull away from Bark Green, we'll start to descend the Licky Incline, the steepest section of track on Britain's railways. Back in the age of steam, a dedicated bank locomotive was required to help push trains up the hill. For 18 months they used this dedicated Bayer Garrett locomotive, the largest train ever to operate on British railways. However, it wasn't that good. And this brings us to Bromsgrove, where the station recently got rebuilt. It has step-free access and things, and this weird departure board that looks like an airboard. Whilst the fast Birmingham to Hereford trains do stop here, 
The cross-country surfaces don't, which means you can get some very good footage of them coming by at high speed. The scenery drastically changes until our next station at Drobridge Spa, which is a clear sign that we're now very much out of Birmingham. Drumwich Spa is so named because it had a spa. Obviously. This is a place where Victorians would go to enjoy some fresh water and things. It apparently had healing powers, or not, not in a spiritual sense, it was just good for the body. Nowadays, however, the quite underwhelming station is worsened by the fact that it has two six coach stop markers. This is the peak of stupidity. Why? <clears throat> now we go onwards to Worcester Fulgate Street which is a very busy station but only has two platforms. To cater for this, it has two-way working on both of them. It's very interesting, and a rare sight. Outside though, beneath a very impressive bridge, there's a strangely sinister mural. We now pull away from Worcester Fulgate Street and get spectacular views of the cathedral along the river. The line then continues to Malvern Link, which is a relatively small station, but it's immaculately maintained and painted in great western colours. There's also a house at the end of the platform, which flies a very weird triangular-ish sort of British Rail flag. I really like that. We now arrive in Great Malvern. This is a fantastic station, and has received a lot of fame as a result of that. It's just brilliantly painted, and on the pillars there is all of little flowers and leaves carved out of the ironwork. It's really exceptional. More uniquely though, there's a worm at the end of the platform, as in a tunnel that would lead to a hotel. This is very unusual, but you can still sort of about see it today. Unfortunately, it's locked out of use, and the hotel is now a school. Shortly after leaving Great Malvern, we'll pass a signal box named Malvern Wells. This is intriguing. There was originally a station here. When it opened in 1862, it was called Malvern Wells, which explains the signal box, but in 1951, it was renamed Malvern Hanley Road, to avoid confusion with the other Malvern station called Malvern Wells. I know, it's crazy. Sadly though, on the 1st of December 1952, it was abandoned for good. The other Malvern Wells, commonly referred to as Malvern Junction for simplicity's sake, was also closed eventually. The railway then conjoins into just a single track, so it can travel in a Victorian tunnel under the imposing Malvern Hills. The next, open station, is Colwall. This is the only single track station on the line. It's in quite a picturesque setting, nestled in the hills, but the station isn't that notable other than having a disused platform. After passing through another tunnel, we arrive at Ledbury. There's quite a lot to say about Ledbury, like how it's one of the few remaining towns in Britain to still have its medieval road layout, or how it used to be a junction station, or how its station building was once magnificently ornate, like Great Malvern's. But now it's a relatively small and quiet station, and its most interesting feature is the fact that its footbridge has a hole in it. This is so the signaller in the signal box can see the signal ahead. I repeated that word way too many times. After some spectacular views over Ledbury Viaduct, the train continues at relatively high speed to the terminus station of Hereford. This is where we'll end our journey today. Hereford is quite a large station, with four platforms and two through tracks, and was designed by Isambard Kingdom Brunel the architect of the Great Western Railway, amongst many other things. Curiously though, the city Nottingham is inscribed on two flower beds in front of the facade. If anyone can explain how they got here, I'd be eager to know. And that was a far too brief look at the Birmingham to Hereford mainline. I do hope you enjoyed, it was very fun to make. Of course, I'm no expert in this field. If any of you are far more acquainted with the route, then please let me know if I've got anything wrong. Also, more train reviews will be coming when I actually find some new trains to go on. But other than that, I think it's it. Enjoy your day, and goodbye.